It feels good to be back again here on Breakfast Central on New Central on a Thursday morning. And guess what? People are not back to work because it is a public holiday. But guess who's back to work? Yes, myself, <laughs> me and uh, Olive. I'm Joe Hansen saying good morning. Uh, it's a rather happy and sad mode for everyone, uh, especially for those who woke up with high, ho um, high hopes uh, that the uh, actor... A junior Pope would actually survive. But then again, uh, it's a sad story. It's a really sad story. Social media was initially agog with excitement at the news that he had survived, only to later be hit with further information that he had unfortunately lost the battle. Several technicalities as to what exactly went wrong are going to be explored on the show this morning, even as we connect with our correspondent, Austin Azu, who is outside the hospital in Delta State, Asaba. This morning, uh, we'll also be looking at some of the stories regarding what's happening in the North. But before we share our top stories, we we'll bring you breakfast headlines. I'm Olive Emodi, and now let's talk to Judith. Hello, Judith. Good morning. Good morning, guys. A very good morning to you, Lady Olive and Sir Joe Hansen. Thank good you. To good, be morning. Here. good morning. Good uh, morning. I mean, um, first off, uh, it's the holiday. Um, you're here with us at work. But let me ask very quickly. In the midst of the entire Idel Fitri celebration, um, what story has caught your attention and gotten you um, uh, possibly wondering and saying how? Wow, that's. Uh, um, I think that, of course, every, everyone's eye is in Delta State at the moment and just how the entirety of the story unfolded uh, before our eyes, just from last night or early evening all the way down uh, to this morning. It's. Um, uh, the whole turn of event is very interesting when you look, about, look at how the ethics of journalism has sort of been blurred uh, in terms of the lines and how the story was handled by many of the blogs and the uh, gossip websites as well and not waiting to go to the source and just, you know, it's, it's, just, it's interesting how social media has blurred what we hold as ethics when it comes to journalism. So... I think that's what's really at the fore for me. It's very uh, interesting to watch and how, just seeing how it all, on, on, it's all unfolded uh, from yesterday all the way to today. My heart really just breaks at the passing of this young man who was going to do what he loves to do, making movies, and that's how he feeds his family. That's how he takes care of his family. He's a, he was a father, a husband, and a father of three. And it's not just you know how much this hurts because it's him, but also how, how Nollywood has been impacted this year alone. A number of Nollywood actors. I mean, just a few days ago, we're talking about um, uh, Jennifer's Diary star, who unfortunately passed as well. So it's just been like every other week, we've been hearing stories about people, or at least every month this year, we've lost a Nollywood star. And I'm sure we'll look into the details of the story deeper when we join Austin. But it's also just sad to highlight the failures on different levels failures of our government to be able to ensure that there are strict rules on the waterways because truly nobody should get on a boat without a life jacket. And if you, I, I've gone on a boat several times. And if you see some of the life jackets that they give you, I then decided that I want to buy my own life jacket. So anytime I need to go to the beach, I will go with my own life jacket. Because those life jackets look like if you fell into the water, both you and the life jacket, you are going down. So it's just really sad to see uh, the level of regulation that is lacking when we come to uh, water transport here in Nigeria. Yeah, I mean, Olive, besides regulation, I also think that it's us as well as Nigerians and just as a people in general, when we choose to accept um, a, a dysfunction as the norm, that's what will happen. Because if you as an individual who understands what safety is and understands that your life is special and it matters, and you choose not to accept um, a dysfunction and uh, just literally or when people are not doing their job correctly, that's what's going to happen. Um, and at the risk of sounding unfair or sound crude or, or any of those lines, it's just we as individuals, as Nigerians, need to start not just holding the government accountable, but all holding ourselves accountable as well. Why would you get on a speedboat without a life jacket and not even request for one? Why are the people who are in charge of the production not ensure that those who are members of the crew are safe? Those are also the questions we need to be asking as well. Who are in charge of production? How were you able to get from one location to another? I'm sure this has been going on for days, and nobody thought that, oh, safety matters. The people on this boat, they matter. 
let's talk about Life Jacket. And even before that, there was pre-production to start to think about how they can get on those boats and get to where they need to be. And nobody thought about their safety as well. It's, uh, it's, uh, we as it's, Nigerians it's, it's, need it's to a, start asking ourselves this question. It's a sad, it's a sad situation. But then again, um, like we said, if you're joining us this morning, we'll get to the root cause of the matter. A man is on ground currently at the hospital. He will be joining us immediately after the breakfast and headlines. But first, uh, while Judith waits to bring to us the breakfast headlines, let's bring to you what our top stories would be looking like this morning. And let's begin by telling you that operatives of the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority rescued 18 injured accident victims at Adekunle in Ward Adeniji Adele on 3rd Mainland Bridge, Lagos. The Director of Public Affairs and Enlightenment Department of LASMA, Adebayo Taofik, disclosed that 18 seriously injured passengers were rescued by LASMA officials from Zone Lagos Island. Preliminary investigations revealed that a 20 fully loaded LT commercial bus speed lost control as a result of a brake failure and was about to fall inside the lagoon before it was stopped by the rail of Third Mainland Bridge. And on to Edo State, where the impeached Deputy Governor Philip Shwaibu has written to the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ulukayo de Ariwola, to obtain a complaint form to file a formal petition against the Chief Judge of Edo, and that's Justice Daniel Ogua. Shwaibu was impeached on Monday by the State House of Assembly following the adoption of the report of a seven man panel set up by the Chief Judge to probe him for alleged perjury and leaking the government's secrets. The panel concluded its probe last Friday after joining twice for Schreiber to appear for his defense without the ex-deputy governor showing up. And on to Senegal, where the newly elected president, Basiru Diomaye Faye, arrived at the Grand Mosque of Dakar to join other worshippers for Eid al-Fitri prayers as Muslims around the world celebrate the festival which marks the end of the Ramadan fast. Faye attributed his victory at the general elections to God and the citizens. He made remarks of the mosque following prayers. He made remarks at the mosque, I beg your pardon, following prayers referring to the postponed presidential election which took place during Ramadan. <laughs> commencer le jeûne, faire une campagne électorale paisible au Sénégal, faire une élection calme et sereine au Sénégal et choisir dans la paix le président de la République. Nous devons dire que le Sénégal est un pays qui est un et indivisible. Il est de notre responsabilité collective et de notre responsabilité individuelle d'entretenir ce vivre ensemble qui fait la stabilité de notre pays que le monde entier nous envie. Le Sénégal est un pays de grands hommes, de grands hommes de Dieu, de grands hommes politiques. C'est un héritage sacré et c'est un héritage précieux que nous avons le devoir de for the first time since June, passengers disembarked in the region's capital, and that's in, that's in uh, Senegal, Zingachor, uh, under the midday sun on Wednesday after an overnight uh, voyage along the Atlantic coast mangroves and the banks of Casamance River under the escort of a military vessel. The maritime link is vital for the economy of the rural and cut off Casamance region and an alternative for many who can't afford the cost of a plane ticket. Bon, je suis tellement ému que les mots me manquent parce que c'est pour moi une première fois de prendre le bateau de Dakar à Jérémie Alors, comme le bateau était stationné pendant quelques mois, alors nous sommes ravis, contents de faire ce trajet en toute sécurité et en toute quiétude. Que vraiment on avait été vraiment privé de notre, notre liberté. Et voilà que nous avons repris notre liberté. Et vraiment, ça nous permettait de beaucoup voyager. <coughs> Quitter Dakar pour venir à Zigiencho pour au moins faire nos, nos besoins, y compris nos parents. 
aujourd'hui pour vous dire vrai, vraiment, c'est pour que au moins l'économie puisse reprendre. Parce que vraiment, on était à stand-by et rien ne marchait. C'est un grand plaisir pour moi de, au moins de voir le bateau reprendre son trajet. Oui, ça représente beaucoup de choses. Parce que lorsque la navire a arrêté de prendre son cours, nous avons constaté qu'on avait eu du mal à, à, à écouler nos produits. Par exemple, nos produits pour les transporter d'ici à Dakar, on avait énormément de difficultés. And on to Liberia, where the Senate has overwhelmingly voted in favor of establishing a long-awaited war crimes court in a significant step that brings the nation closer to holding those accountable for atrocities committed during its brutal civil wars. Now, the two civil wars, which lasted from 1989 to 2003, claimed an estimated 250,000 lives and were marked by horrific acts of massacres, rape, and even cannibalism. In a decisive move, the Senate backed a resolution supporting the establishment of a war and economic crimes court following a similar vote in the lower house of parliament last month. And that's all on headlines. Back to Lady Olive and Sergio. Nos breakfast headlines. We'll see you again at 9 a.m. All right. Well, a lot to talk about. Most importantly, Nigerians are still um, shocked, especially with the, uh, the, the mishap that did take place yesterday uh, from the newly uh, uh, renewed, I'll use that word, third mainland bridge uh, down to Delta State in Asama, where an actor and a few others have lost their lives. Uh, there seems to be a bit of confusion in the air, but we'll try as much as possible to unpack these stories in the mix of other top stories that we would be bringing to you later today here on Breakfast Central. I mean, it's really very sad. It's very sad. And just also, and I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that, that an actor and others lost their oh, yeah. lives because uh, we don't want it to seem like any life is more important than the other. The reason why he's is making more news, making the, the headlines is, of course, because he's popular. So that will certainly make the headlines. But every life that was affected there matters and is valued. Right. Now, heart just goes out to Nollywood, and especially to his family. I can't imagine the, uh, the mixed emotions they must have felt. First, from sadness, anxiety, from sadness to anxiety, hearing that his fingers so moved and that he was alive, and then being thrown back into dep depression or sadness or hopelessness. I, I can't it's imagine it's how that much. feels. It's too much. And then there were, there, were, there were calls, there were statements of confusion happening. Uh, they wanted to take him to the hospital. Took him to a shrine. The CPR was not administered and so on and so forth. Let's take him to the shrine. So, so, so I, I think there's two things here. Um, I think that it's very important that we all learn CPR. Every organization, every school should have safety awareness. Every month, bring out an hour or two hours. I think that every school should make this a part of their curriculum. And every organization should ensure that you know, they have CPR. They have CPR. You know, they teach people because learning and being able to administer CPR is just a thin line between life and death. Who knows if that could have helped? Yeah, that's it. And we'll go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll go straight to our top stories. Our first stop will definitely be a one that everyone is indeed talking about. That will be in Asaba. But first, let's go for a break. Breakfast Central continues in a moment. Welcome back to Breakfast Central. As Muslim faithful in Nigeria join their counterparts across the world to mark the Eid al Fitri celebration, some citizens have called on government and other well meaning citizens to extend a hand of fellowship to those in need. Our correspondent, Idong Joseph, reports. It's an early start for the Muslim Eid prayers after a long time of spiritual reflection. Muslim faithful in Abuja converged on several worship centers to join their counterparts from across the world to offer prayers, marking the end of the Ramadan fast. They are celebrating today because they are finishing one of the pillars of Islam. And they learn many lessons. The hope is that Muslims shall learn from the lessons of piety, sacrifice, compassion, kindness, and love for each other. Several faithful here have finished their prayers 
and are set for the Eid celebrations with families and friends. And for many, the Ramadan concludes a period of devotion, marking a fresh beginning. While the day is celebrated with plenty to eat and drink, there are however some who rely on arms for survival, for whom the situation seems to be different. I have one and I have one, make me come outside to come and stay for a lot for here. If I have, I can really come and stay for my lady, I can stay for my, for my house and celebrate with my friends. We have come here severally seeking for help. Nobody cares to listen or help us. Instead, they help those who don't really need any assistance. People discriminate us anytime we go to them for help, most especially those we practice same faith with. It is people from other faiths that cares to help us. With the current economic reality taking its toll on citizens, some are calling on governments and well-meaning Nigerians to extend the hand of support to those in need. We roam the streets every day seeking for help because we have children we must cater for. The government has done their best for us, but we wish they still do more. Religious leaders have also taxed Muslims across the country to unite and pray for guidance from our Jewish leaders. In Abuja for New Central, I am Idonk Joseph. Yeah. You can say, no doubt. Um, the Muslim faithfuls have indeed um, expressed what they expect from you Nigerians. Don't forget too that the president, President Bola Metinibu, was in Lagos alongside other uh, state governors who did join him, uh, especially yesterday. But let's move away from this story and move on to the next story. It's got to do with uh, a lot of conversation surrounding what's going on. Well, just yesterday, um, Nigerians were reacting to the accident that did happen at the Third Mainland Bridge. But then again, after that, um, uh, attention was indeed moved to Asaba as well. Absolutely. Right. Yesterday, there were reports of a uh, Nollywood actor who, unfortunately, initially the reports had it that he had died, and later we had heard that he had come back you know, to life, and then much later again, we had reports that he had given up. Yesterday evening, he was involved in a boat mishap on River Niger while journeying to a movie location. A large crowd gathered in front of St. Joseph Catholic Church, uh, Catholic Hospital in Asaba, the capital of Delta State, where he was rushed to after being rescued from the river. Well, our source says that the actor was not confirmed dead yet. Uh, the talented actor had been moved to First Delta American Hospital in Asaba and was under closed medical examination while he was still breathing. At least there were signs of him still being alive. Uh, but then again, our reporter did join yesterday where he made mention of the fact that um, uh, the news that was filtering out from the hospital uh, didn't seem to be good news. This morning, we do have Austin Azu, our reporter, who is live in Asaba, to also follow up with uh, the latest story concerning this very sad incident. Uh, good morning to you, um, Azu, if you can hear us. Austin, as well, are you there? Austin, can you please unmute your device? We're, we're unable to hear you. Well, I would try to, um, you know, um, connect with Austin Azu. Uh, we'll try as much as possible to ensure that he can give us the latest story coming out from um, Delta State right there. But the, the story simply is that um, the actor did not make it. Very sad incident. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth, and just like Judith had mentioned when she joined us earlier on, uh, there was indeed a lot of rumors going around in social media space, which also calls for credence and also calls for the need for, uh, in order for people to indeed ensure that they run away from misinformation and disinformation concerning the, uh, this particular incident. But then again, Nigeria is equally asking, what would it take uh, for anyone who is engaging in that journey or using the waterways to have gotten at least a live vest. But before we go into what could have happened or what should have happened, uh, let's focus on the story at hand. A video did circulate first where the actor was talking while on the speedboat. And there he had said that um, uh, the boat should indeed slow down and not run on high speed because 
He talked about him having a lot of persons to take care of and so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden, the news filtered into the social media space first that the actor was dead. And the unfortunate thing is, I mean, seeing the reality of it was going to his page and realizing that he had posted that video 10 hours before that unfortunate news hit uh, social media about how, he, and the caption has something to do with the things we do, the sacrifices we make for you or something like that. It was just, a, it was a, a surreal, but no, no, surreal sounds too good, but like, it was scary to witness it. Very, very scary to uh, witness it. And uh, we hear that the sound man and the makeup artist were also on the boat, but they've not yet been accounted for. Their bodies have not yet been found. And that's a, it's a really sad, sad reality. They left their houses thinking they were going to make a movie and unfortunately did not come back. Now let's share with you uh, the, number, the list of Nollywood actors that have passed this year so far. We're just in the fourth month of 2024. It's just April. And we've seen a long list of actors who have unfortunately passed. Um, and I'll be starting off with, uh, in January, on the 4th of January, we had uh, Deji Aderemi, who is uh, popularly known as Olofa Ino. Deji Aderemi died on the 4th of January, 2023, 2024. Uh, according to reports, he died of cancer. We also have veteran, uh, veteran actress Etel Epe, who died on the 7th of February, 2024. She's well known for playing the role of Segi on um, the Nigerian Television Authority sitcom Basi and Company. We also have Yoruba Nollywood actor Tolani Quadri Oyebamiji, popularly known as CC Quadri. Uh, he died on the 1st of March at the age of 44 after celebrating his 44th birthday in December. Um, his death was announced by some of his colleagues in the Yoruba movie industry. And then we also have Tunde Yusuf. Uh, no, no, sorry. I, I take that back. Tunde Yusuf is not dead. Uh, we also have um, Mr. Ibu. He, he died at the age of 62. He, he, it, it, it was a very, very heartbreaking moment. All of these stories plunging fans into sadness. And then there was Amechi Monago. Mr. Ibu and Amechi Monago were a very huge part of our childhood for those of us who are millennials. Uh, they made up the Nollywood that we grew up to see, the Nollywood that has now birthed, the Nollywood that is today. Amechi Monago died on Sunday, March 24, after battling a kidney disease for a long time. And we also have Adeju Moke or Reolua Adeju popularly known for her role as Esther in Jennifer Di Jennifer's Diary. She died on the 7th of March. And now, unfortunately, added to the list, days after uh, Adeju Moke's announcement, we now have Junior Pope, who has now officially been announced as dead. You know, I've seen many people come on social media to share their anger, their annoyance, saying that this was such an avoidable death. It should not have happened. This is not the death of... I mean, if he was sick and he died, maybe people could understand a bit and say, you don't plan for sickness. But this was a very, very unavoidable death. It was very sad to see. He couldn't wear his, you know, he didn't have a life jacket. And, you know, it, it, it's just really, really sad to see. I mean, Joe, what exactly do, you know, what are, how do we go forward from this? Because what gives me cause for concern is we'd all get angry and at the end of the day, nothing would come out of this situation. Quite, 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 a, quite a sad story, I must say. Um, a, lot, a, lot, a lot would have been avoided, as, as many have said. Um, first of all, for me, there should have been a life jacket. For me personally, um, why, why would you get on a boat without a life jacket? You see that, <coughs> excuse me, you see that one? I think that sometimes it's easier said, and I, I'm not saying that it's a responsible thing for you to get on a boat on a life jacket, but we can't flog the disease. But it, nobody ever goes into this boat thinking, if I don't wear this life jacket today, I'm going to die. Sometimes it's a very short distance. And these routes, they apply them every other day. So sometimes you just go in thinking, oh, I'll soon be there. It's just a five-minute boat ride. It shouldn't be anything complicated. And there are several people that apply these routes regularly. So, and, I, and I'm saying this as someone who has been on a boat outside of Nigeria and... I looked around and nobody was wearing a life jacket and I asked for the life jacket and they said that the life jacket, they pointed to the life jackets, they were all stacked up together and they said we, we will get to a point and then they will give everybody the life jacket and I honestly admit that I was a coward, <clears throat> I was a coward by not insisting at that moment that I wanted a life jacket immediately because we are going on a boat ride. Because I didn't want to look uncool like everybody else is asking, everybody else you know doesn't it's not, it's not insistent. They were all foreigners. I was the only black person on that boat. 
no one was insistent on having a life jacket. So I was nervous. This is why I'm saying to you that I, I won't even blame him. Sometimes you just keep hoping. I, I seemed to realize that I was the only person who was afraid on that boat. I was the only person who was asking, where's the life jacket? Why, why are we not wearing the life jacket? Nobody was asking. So sometimes it could be that, it could be a situation like that. You don't assume that you're going to die. You don't want to be the odd person out, whatever the case is. But I think it's a lesson for all of us to learn. It's just an, un an unfortunately sad lesson. Very. That we must all then know that going forward, before you get on any boat, you will insist. And if the life jacket is not fit for purpose, yeah. you don't get on it. But the reality of it is, there are those who are moving from the island to Ikorodu that ply these routes every day. Do, can we really say for sure that the safety measures have been put in place? Can we say that these waters are safe? That the quality, not just the fact that they have life jackets, but that we can guarantee the quality of the life jacket. So whilst we as individuals have a responsibility to play, I will still say that the government has a whole responsibility to play as well, especially regarding ensuring that our waterways, there are stricter rules, stricter measures. We need to get to the... I don't know if the, if the uh, man who was the captain of that boat, I don't know if his body has been found. I don't know if he passed, which is why I'm hoping that we can connect with Austin. But we need to start knowing that there will be repercussions if, there's, if your boat capsizes. The way that they say the captain goes down with his boat or the pilot goes down with his plane. If your boat capsizes, you just know that you are praying that you go with it. If not, when you come back, you will be made to dance to the to dance to the tune but, of but the Lord. Most, most, most times, it's not the pilot's um, uh, or the captain's um, call. So there's, there's so if also, it capsizes without a li and, and they're not wearing a life jacket, that, what uh, I'm of course saying. that's where that's where that's yeah. where so exactly. you must always that's insist the point. because that's I mean the point. even. As I'm talking about this thing, even in that same country where I went to, there were bikes. But if you get on any bike, they will not carry you if you don't refuse if you don't wear your helmet. So as you are getting on the bike, before you get on the bike, where, where, they where, give you the helmet. Where is the helmet uh, law that was implemented in Lagos, in Nigeria, that nobody should climb a bike? You don't you don't mount a bike without your helmet. Helmet, yes. We, we we all know the story. First off, we, people started using slippers as helmets. People started using nylon nylon bags as helmets. Really? Oh, yes. I didn't Come that. on. It was everywhere. People even went as far as getting helmets that were dirty, dead, smelly, no clips, and so on. And it became a. Pro I, I recall, I, I used to use the bikes as well. The Okadas, they're probably called. And then there was this thing of you climb the Okada, he hands over the helmet to you. It's all dirty. And you're like, how do I put this on my head? So we had to revert to the case whereby you, you, you take your face cap. You know, you put on your face cap or you wear a head cover before you put it on. So there were instances. But what we're trying to say is, are we a security conscious culture? The answer simply is no. Are we a maintenance culture? The, uh, do we have, rather, do we have a maintenance culture as a country? The answer is no. no. Sometimes, like people would say, until it hits home or it hits the spot that, that, that hurts the most, which happens to be, sadly, the spot of the, in quotes, the so-called, you know, the elite, or the person who is in charge, or someone who is close to power, then you would start seeing uh, more activities take up. Uh, people would say, oh, let, you know what, let's put security measures, let's do this. But I also noticed something with that. It's only for a short period of time. It's called initial gra gra. Yeah, it's a short period of time. It's a stopgap. Because after that, what happens? Everybody returns back to status quo. Now, this actor is dead. What will happen? Let's wait and see. Maybe the state governor will come up with a statement. Or, or better still, the, the spokesperson. Uh, very sad. Going forward, this is what we're going to do. Let's Nobody see what the commissioner will ask what route. he's going to do exactly. for that. Nobody because, should apply that route. I mean, it would be a shame. This. The only way that they can ensure that that man's life and his death is not a waste is one, to do proper investigation. Two, to ensure that there are stricter laws concerning traveling on water in that state. And this is something that should apply to the different parts of the country, not just in Delta State. We want to see stricter measures for travel around the country where you know that you can't just get on a boat. And every other day we are seeing Ilashe accidents. We hear about Ilashe accidents. Oh, these ones were on their way to Ilashe, the boats capsized, one person drowned and stuff like that. We need to see that we're providing... We can't stop people from going to Ilashe. No. We can't stop people from going to the beach to enjoy themselves. No. But what you can do is ensure that the measures there are strict. And individuals, if you can afford it, 
please, if you know you're someone who plies the water regularly, buy your own life jacket. And I'm saying this because I've seen people who do. Oh, yeah, and yeah. I said oh, I, I have, wanted to I have, buy my yeah, own life jacket yeah, yeah. because I realized that the quality of the jacket that I was given <laughs> wasn't so great. And I just asked them, I said, this thing, if I fall inside the water, are you sure it's not under the sea? Because I, I, was, I was going from CMS to a papa. Okay? And, of course, you need to use the water uh, system, the waterway system. And we got in, yeah, I would say fairly, not well organized, but fairly. And we were given life jackets. And, of course, with, with, with the guys I went with, safety is not, is not something we negotiate. Because it's either it's safe or we or don't. It I mean, sometimes you just have to think of the people at home. You have families at home. You have friends. You don't want to... If it's something you can avoid, there's a difference between uh, instances that you cannot avoid. Yeah. Maybe accidents that happen, you can't avoid that. And that brings us, we're going to talk about the, 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 um, the accident that happened on the Third Midland Bridge as well. Because everything is a mishap just yesterday. And when we're about to get into the boat, we said, no, where are the jackets? They said, no, it's a covered the speedboat, you know, it's covered. And then, no, 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 no. They said, oh, yeah, but the rule is you must get a life jacket. And we got the life jacket. But to my surprise, the floaters weren't, weren't working. And, and I said, okay, so why are, aren't the floaters? What's going on? Why aren't they? They said, are you sure if I pull, it's going to come up? They say, yeah, well, technically, it may not. Like, okay, fine. Can you change it? Good enough, there was a sound person there. Was, I said, oh, yes. And I told them, enjoy, sorry, a change it, you know, in Yoruba. You know, quickly change it and it was changed. So my point is, you knew the right thing to do. You knew it wasn't working. You knew it, was, it, was, it wasn't good, but you still handed it over to a human being, to people and Because say, we are a country that, that doesn't prioritize safety and we like risk. And everybody just thinks, no, it's not, it will not happen to me. It yeah, will not happen to yeah. me. So we have that mindset. We have this, uh, oh, it won't happen to me. Know, a lot hand magic. over the head. A lot, a lot magic. magic. It will not catch me. So, the, the captains of these boats just think, oh, my own boat will not capsize. Nothing will happen to us. And then, even when you ask, because the number of them have never had any sort of, any sort of accident like that, but it just takes one Same thing with the bus. For that accident to happen. And that takes us to the third mainland bridge accident yesterday. First off, we must say, well done to the Lagos State Governor, Governor Babajide Songwolu, of course, and well done to um, the Minister, um, David Umayi for ensuring that construction works are being carried out diligently, especially uh, looking at the Third Midland Bridge. That bridge, at some point, was scary to drive on because of the instability. But then again, weeks were gone, months were gone, the bridge was indeed fixed and restored. I do recall that on April the 3rd, the general manager, Mr. Oki, of LASMA, did come out to say that Going forward, now that the bridge is opened, please everybody cut down the speed. Do not run on excessive speed as well. All right, he did make clear, he said, Don't run. But yesterday, what we saw that happened with the bus is a tragedy that hurts us so bad that we could keep talking, but unfortunately, nothing will happen because the bus drivers feel, Oh, the road is so smooth, so therefore, let us hit and start running. And the doors of the buses that are supposed to be closed We're will open. not be closed. Yeah. They will be opened. Anyway, um, we'll move away from there. We'll bring more updates with this story as we proceed. But now let's move to the north where the Northern Elders Forum, NEF, has expressed disappointment at the region's vote in the general elections of 2023 for President Bola Tinubu. Recall that President Tinubu received the most votes from the region when running on the platform of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Abdulaziz uh, the Suleiman, the forum spokesperson, declared that the region would prioritize unity and consensus when choosing a candidate for the nation's highest office in subsequent polls, especially the general elections in 2027. Well, he went on to say that the region would pick a candidate who is seen as more inclusive, less contentious, and more in line with the interests of all regions of the country. Well, the good thing is this morning, we're being joined by Director of Publicity and Spokesperson, Northern Elders Forum, Mr. Abdulaziz Sulaiman. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, it feels good to see you again. And uh, most importantly, um, it's quite uh, one that makes me think on this note, uh, I mean, there's a lot of complaints coming from um, this aspect of the president not being 
um, inclusive, not uh, doing a lot and so on for the northern uh, aspect or the northern area. Can you shed more light why there seems to be some form of um, unhappiness uh, emerging from the, your area? Yeah, yeah. You see, uh, first and foremost, uh, we want to clarify uh, something slightly. It's not the northern elders that is uh, that is great voting to Nubu because in the first place, the northern elders did not participate in the process that brought Nubu to power. The northern elders was all alone neutral. It insisted on uh, 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 on uh, comprehensive scrutiny of all the candidates. So the Northern Elders Forum did not participate in the processes that brought that gave him the ticket and the processes that brought him to power subsequently. It was uh, the Northern Governors led by Erufai. I think if we, we can all remember when uh, Erufai insulted all the Northern Elders uh, for, 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 for declining to support Tinubu. Now what we are saying is that as Elders, as representatives of the people of Northern Nigeria, we are telling the president that the North is angry, the North is frustrated and disillusioned. Uh, they, uh, they were, most of the people were voted for him because uh, of, the, uh, of the sentiment uh, of the uh, Muslim Muslim ticket. That, that's what that one we are sure of. Uh, but they did not, uh, they did not heed our counsel counsel from the northern elders that candidates must be scrutinized to find out their level of uh, understanding of the challenges in northern Nigeria and their preparation uh, uh, for, for, for tackling them. Uh, so uh, eventually Tinubu became president and there were high hopes I think all over the country uh, that, that he could uh, bring about change quickly. Uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, the entire country was disappointed. The North inclusive. You see, when, when the country suffers, when the economy of the nation suffers, the North bears the brunt more than the other sections of the country because of, uh, I think, its uh, the density, uh, its population density, and 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 and, and, and its uh, backwardness in uh, uh, economic strength and other things. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Abdulaziz, sorry, sorry, sorry to butt in. Sorry to butt in, please. Now, the okay. North. Can you hear yes. me? Can you hear me? So, yes. Sorry to butt in at this point. So, uh, for clarity, for clarity's sake, it is not the yes. Northern Elders Forum yes. that are angry. It is just the Northern Elders. It's not, no. it's not the Northern Elders that is creating vote in Tunubu. You understand? So who? Who are they? Are they the Northern Governors? You know, you know, you know, the Northern, the Northern Elders Forum has no cause to regret because it did not participate in the process at all. It did not, okay. it did not uh, ask anybody to vote Tinubu. It did not, it, it, did, uh, it, 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 it stood firmly on conditions that all candidates must be scrutinized before uh, a choice was made. So it's not the Northern Elders that forum that is regretting. It has no cause to regret whatsoever in. Uh, uh, for, for the failure of uh, an action that it did not participate in. You see, the, the, what the people that are regretting are the people that, uh, that, 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 that insisted on Tinubu and the people that were deceived into voting. So who are these people? So who, who are they? Yeah. Who are they? The, the, the voters that gave him 60% in the North. Okay, so the, the, the Northern voters or you simply put um, the people from the north? Northern, Northern, Northern uh, Nigeria. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. All right, so why are yeah, they regretting? The ones so that are regretting votes. Because you see, they had high hopes. Uh, uh, that was why they voted him, because they were, uh, they, 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 they were thinking, they were, they were apprehensive that he should bring a quick change to their... Uh, uh, immense problems you see they had problems of uh, security there are problems of security economy and, and and poverty and other things in northern nigeria and they felt he could bring about some so so some measure of change but unfortunately like i was saying the entire country was disappointed the north inclusive uh his economic policies turned out to be to be rash they turned out to be harsh uh inflicting harm more harm 
on, on the populace than, than, than good. So you see, like I was saying, when the economy of the nation uh, uh, it, it, it becomes challenged, the North feels the pain more than other sections of the country because of, 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 of our, 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 our density, population density, and, 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 and some lapses in the economy. So uh, the North felt most primarily he would tackle the security situation. Uh, but unfortunately, he, up to this moment, he is uh, he is he, he is he's taking the same approach that has failed. That, that, the, that the same approach followed by the by the by the previous administration, which has not worked. So you find that up to this moment, communities in Kasina, for instance, in Zamfara, Sokoto, Niger, and Kaduna states are still estranged. They 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 they, 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 they are facing challenges, serious challenges. And go, the government uh, keep promising that, that that action will be taken. We're not saying that, that, that there is no action. Yeah, of course there is action here and there, but that was the same action that has been going on ineffectively since the uh, eight years or previous administration. We were expecting something different, uh, but uh, uh, they are still doing this, uh, following the same approach. Uh, so honestly, the north now look at see the level of inflation. Uh, our people are hungry to a point where the entire nation, uh, a, a worldwide uh, protest, had to had, had, had to be carried out. So really, the disappointment is there. Uh, the, 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 the disillusionment is there. All right. Uh, so now, if the Northern Elders Forum had the opportunity, or the Northern Elders had the opportunity to speak with the president at the moment. What are some of the changes you would like him to implement? Or what are some of the things that you bring to his uh, notice? Have you, uh, the, most, largely, as far as the North is concerned, is security that, 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 that is their problem now. Policing our community is our problem now. We, I think we, we held, uh, uh, the North held uh, an, a security summit sometimes about two months ago, and we gave proposals to, to the government. Of on how to involve the communities to get the, the communities uh, to own the fight so that they, they, they cooperate okay. fully with the students on the whenever not their own fight. But I don't think uh, uh, any action has been taken for that. So, really, if uh, uh, we are given the chance, we will be, we'll be speaking, we'll be advising the government, we'll be speaking. Uh, we, uh, we're, we're elders, so we're not uh, people who just smear administrations, no. But um, if I may say this, um, some governors beg to defer in, in this uh, thought. Uh, some governors have said that the president is doing absolutely well, especially some governors from the north, uh, one of which is um, uh, Governor Zulum, uh, who has also spoke highly of uh, the president and other governors as well. So at what point um, can we now say that the president needs to do more, having the fact that some governors are saying that he's already doing well? You see, gov gov governors are politicians. They are part of the problems. Uh, in fact, they, 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 they are a major part of the problems. They are politicians. They, 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 they praise themselves. And besides, Zulu is from the northeast. Uh, where they've had Boko Haram, and uh, we we all agreed that even since previous administration, Boko Haram has been has been discriminated uh, somehow to some extent. Where the problem is right now is the northwest. So we cannot speak for the northwest. We are from the northwest. We know what's happening. Uh, ask Sina, let, the, let the governor of Sina tell the same thing uh, Zulu is telling us. Let the governor of Zomfara tell us the same thing Zulu is telling us. I think even just last week, the governor of Zomfara state said uh, the state is being overwhelmed by, by bandits. And uh, in United States, I think just two days ago, about 30 people were ambushed and killed by, by, by bandits. So for anyone to say that uh, there is improvement in the security situation, in particularly in the Northwest and some parts of uh, 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 no central, uh, it, it, it's, it's so, um, looking at the last elections, 
look, looking at the last elections, you did yeah. say that the Northern Elvers, uh, you know, were not a part of the democratic process or the process, the elect elective process that brought the current administration into power. Uh, would there would there have been the a Northern, it, sorry? Go ahead. The Northern Elders Forum, the Northern Elders Forum was part of the process. Okay. But what you are saying is, it did not endorse Tinubu nor no any any candidate because its conditions was that all candidates must submit to scrutiny so well, that's what i wanted to ask selection is made. that's what i wanted to ask was there any other yeah. alternative that the northern elders forum would have preferred at the last election of course there, there would have been if the if if, if the if the uh candidates had submitted uh, has, have, has subjected themselves to scrutiny proper scrutiny any one of them who had uh, uh, ready solutions for the North would have been would have been unanimously uh, a consensus candidate for Northern Nigeria. Uh, so I think what what happened was we left it open for for people to vote whom they wanted to vote. Uh, we did not we did not uh, try to persuade anybody. That was what happened. All right. Uh, my final question to you uh, would be that um, now that we have this, uh, it seems that the Northern voters are threatening ahead of 2027 that they will no longer vote for President Bola Ahmed Tinubu ahead of the second term. Uh, can you confirm this? Uh, not that they will not vote. And if, if, if things go on this way and uh, he carries this burden to 2027, he should forget the Northern votes. But if he changes, the, the, you see, uh, the hope for every citizen is for uh, 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 the development and progress, peace and stability. If we can have that, no, no one, no one will complain. But I really assure you that if the situation persists up to election time, uh, this uh, administration should forget. Okay. Anyway, in, in line with this conversation, so far so good. Um, I think we've deduced the fact that it's not the Northern um, um, Elders Forum, but of course the Northern Voters who are indeed speaking out. But then again, let me ask you. Yes. It's, it's barely a year into President Bola Ahmed Tinibu's tenure. Uh, don't you think we should give him more time? And you see, it's, it's not the laws, the other areas from that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that are complaining for us. If we look, if we look at it, uh, within the first six months, the, the Amnesty International uh, raised issues with the way the government was going. They said it, it has not direct, it has lost direction. And I think there is a, a, a foreign council or something, so foreign council affairs or something, that also raised the same issue. And uh, uh, before the Northern Elders Forum spoke, uh, uh, NLC ASU had spoken. Uh, even the Sultan of Sokoto had spoken. He, 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 he drew the attention of the uh, federal government that it was going the wrong way, that he was uh, angry, and it was getting to a point where they couldn't even control the anger, the, the public anger. And the idea of Colonel also spoke. That was when uh, you see the, there were these agitations even before the Northern Elders were uh, uh, intervened. So it's uh, something that has, uh, that has been on. Things from, from, from the outset of the analysis. from day one, you, there have been uh, uh, there have been uh, anger over 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 his, uh, his his appointments. I think from the south east and the north also. So you see, it is something that has been on from day one. All right, um, thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Uh, as we get more updates on this, hopefully. Uh, the presidency can respond to the Northern Elvis Forum and that we can start to see progress made and some of your expectations being met. Thank you for your time with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Two unidentified passengers are said to have fallen into the Lagos Lagoon after an incident involving the uh, commercial bus on the recently renovated Third Midland Bridge at the Adini Yadili access towards Lagos Island was reported. The two passengers were thrown into the lagoon by the breaking of a completely packed 20-seater commercial bus which collided with the railings at approximately 11 a.m. on Wednesday. Other passengers suffered injuries of varied severity. The National Emergency Management Agency NEMA coordinator Mr. Ibrahim Farinloye stated that the prospects of saving the two passengers, both a male and that's a male and a female, um, who fell off the bus into the Lagos Lagoon had diminished. 
even with efforts of Neymar and the Marine Police. But he said that they are now concentrating on recovery rather than search and rescue. Very, very sad situation. Well, once more, uh, Ibrahim Farin Lawyer, the Coordinator National Emergency Management Agency, Neymar, Lagos uh, Territorial Office, is now joining us here on Breakfast Central, uh, where he will be shedding more light on what the situation um, really is. Hopefully, uh, we can uh, make do with a, a latest report, and hopefully, we can get something out of this. Quite sad situation. You can see the videos there on the screen. Uh, let's see if, um, I mean, this was one incident that Nigerians kept talking about. Well, no doubt um, we'll get um, some more information on that uh, when uh, Mr. Brian Frenloy, Coordinator National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, joins us uh, during the second hour. And um, hopefully, hopefully, we can gain one or two, but it's quite sad that um, a lady and a gentleman who probably left home, left their families behind, and um, maybe said, I'm coming, fortunately um, ended up in the lagoon and could not make it alive. The bodies, as we hear, uh, up until now, until we get an update, um, could not be recovered. But then again, uh, lessons to be learned, and what can we take out from this very sad tragedy? We'll talk about all of that in the second hour, uh, when we do have the coordinator of uh, NEMA join us uh, in the course of the discussion. You're just joining, you're right in time for our newspaper reviews where we look through some of the biggest papers here in Nigeria to see what the front pages are saying. We also will be opening the phone line so you can call in and react to any of the stories. But please remember that before you call in, you should turn down the volume of your TV set so we can have a conversation. Joining us to delve into these stories is Chris K. Nuwandu, the publisher of CKN News. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be here. I said delve, and the moment I said delve, I remember that thread of someone saying on Twitter or on X about how uh, someone had, had pitched a novel to him, but the moment he saw the word delve, mm. he just thought they have used chat GPT. I'm like, this man doesn't know Nigeria. <laughs> and the kind of big, big words, words we that use. we use. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, um, let's get into the top the papers this morning, starting off with the Punch newspaper. On the front page of the Punch newspaper, the big stories that we're seeing this morning are Idel Fitri, defend Nigeria, support leaders, Tinumbu Buhari, urge citizens. Let's protect Nigeria's integrity. Tinubu appeals to Nigerians. Support for leaders, a vote for a better tomorrow, says Buhari. Well, the Northern Elders Forum does not agree <laughs> with this support for leaders. They don't like what they're saying. Namdak orders recall of toxic cough syrup. Oh, here we go again. Ondo Amoteku NAMS 14 suspected kidnappers 31 orders. Fantastic. Olubadon designates health. Ladoja falls or Tumbalogum. Makinde says no crisis. At the top of the paper, electricity tariff, federal government plans 1.5 trillion naira savings and 2.5 million naira meter installations. Uh, we have fresh borrowings may push Nigeria's debt to 11 trillion naira. Cash crunch hits CCB state offices and verific asset verifications face hurdles. And the final story, bank customers' complaints jump by 63%, according to a report. Uh, Sikian, which of the stories would you like to react to first? Uh, I'm wondering why fresh borrowings, why we're having fresh borrowing. That's a bit uh, concerning. I'm, I'm sure we need further insight on that. And the recall of toxic cough syrup. Uh, I, I was good with the main headline, remember? Uh, which is defend Nigeria, support leaders, uh, Nigeria. 
And uh, to a large extent, I, I agree with the president on that. Um, you know, there's this saying, there's this thing by the former president of the United States, uh, what you can do for, how did he put it again? Uh, don't ask not, what, what your what country, country can do, do for you, you, but what you can do yes, for Yes, I think country. that is J.F. Kennedy. And um, so I agree with that. But it's a symbolic relationship. It's both the leaders and the led. You cannot ask me to continue to be patriotic and support government and support, um, believe in my country. When you the leader, you're doing the opposite. So that becomes so. Leadership comes with example, being you know showing examples. And when you lead well, then there will be rest assured that the followers will be able to um, uh, tag along. And that is the but that is not the situation in Nigeria. Our leaders and they are not selfless compared to what you see in other parts of the world, the United States, UK, or whatever, and the rest of there. We have very selfish leaders that, at times, when they say good morning, just make sure you go out to see that the sun, that is really morning, not night. It might actually so be morning. It might, just, it solar, might even be midnight. Eclipse. It might even be midnight. Maybe the solar eclipse. It's, it's, it's but just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so uh, but I totally agree with the president on that. We have to be patriotic. We don't have any other control about this. And um, I'm also one of those that believe that we should not be bad mountain our country every time as it were. All right. All right. Anyway, um, let, let's quickly touch on the next paper since we need to move on very swiftly. Let's look at the Daily Times. That's our next paper. Uh, it has a very big header there. Remain patriotic, uh, similar to what we've seen with the punch. Defend Nigeria's integrity, says renewed hope agenda being diligently implemented. But on the front page there, you can see the picture of the incidents that took place on the Third Mainland Bridge. I'm sure you're aware of that as well. Um, well, to get more information on that, we have joining us this morning Mr. Ibrahim Fariloye. He is the um, coordinator for Neymar. He's joining us live this morning. Our team is there with him. Good morning to you, Mr. Fariloye. Thanks for being here with us. Good morning, sir. All right. Great. Uh, great. Yesterday... Good morning, we... sir. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Good morning to you too. Uh, I'm here. I'm joined with my uh, colleagues as well. Uh, we'll be talking to you this morning for a few minutes. Um, yesterday, we did see the tragic and sad incidents that took place on the Third Mainland Bridge, a newly uh, recommissioned uh, Third Mainland Bridge. And it got a lot of persons talking about the sad incident. Can you confirm to us if uh, the bodies of the, the remaining two persons who... Um, uh, were thrown into the lagoon as a result of the accident. Have they been found? Have their bodies been recovered? Hello? Yes, Mr. Foreign Lawyer, can you hear me? Well, uh, I can't hear you at the concluding part of the question. All right, can you confirm if the bodies have been found, the two bodies, the missing bodies, have they been found? You know. No, they are yet to be uh, recovered, and the search and rescue are still ongoing. And uh, why more local divers have joined the marine police for the search and, uh, of the body? Okay, uh, please give us a clearer picture of what exactly led to that unfortunate incident. So we shared some clarity, and we have. Uh, statement of facts as to what exactly happened yesterday on the Third Mainland Bridge. Well, um, overspeeding was alleged to be the major cause. Uh, while some of the few of the victims that we met alleged that it was uh, the front tire was uh, exploded along the speeding. But uh, that allegation, by if a front tire uh, sped like that and it uh, got busted, there should be a sign cr scratch on the uh, bridge. But what we saw on the bridge was that a matching of brake and the, and the marking took some distance before the bridge rails stopped this from. And uh, also, there were issues of uh, two or three some assaulting. It some assaulted about two or three times before it got down. Although it was uh, by the side, it got down by the side. Those who are by the side of the bus uh, side on the dock were the ones that were flung into the lagoon. Such a sad, such a sad incident. Very, very sad. And uh, just like you said, the bodies have not been recovered yet. But what is Neymar doing concerning um, this, ensuring that 
there's an avoidance of uh, a, a repeat of this kind of accident again in the future. What is Neymar doing? Has there been any statement released? Has there been any caution uh, put through to the downfall or the boss association, if we put it that way? Well, uh, the zona commander and the Lagos zona commander for Lagos and Ogun, road safety, and the sector commander, Mr. Tunde Farinoye, all of us who were there, along with uh, Lagos State uh, Transport uh, Management uh, Agency, last month, the commissioner of police was also there yesterday. An appropriate measure. What I had to recall and uh, told them is to reinforce at least the national policy on transportation, which is quite different from national traffic, I mean, the uh, traffic code. The national policy on transportation is quite explicit. The rules of the uh, passengers, the right of the passengers over the driver, the right of the driver over the passengers. So if there are issues related to abuse or violation of any of the rights, any of them silently, they can send text message, they can send anything inside the bus while issues are ongoing. So this right has to be explicit. It's a contract between a passenger and a driver. And National Policy on Transportation explained this clearly. Once you enter into a contract, the two of you, the two parties, must abide and obey the contract. Any violation, you have rights to take caution. Uh, aside from that, the union, the Road Transport Workers Union, or the whatever the union, or the Road uh, Employers Association, all of them, they have guiding principle, their association. So if your vehicle is not well maintained, if you are over speeding, the Minister of, uh, Federal Minister of Transport, and as I mean, Federal Minister of Housing, I mean, uh, Federal Minister of Works, as well as Lagos State Minister of Transport, explained that they have installed cameras along this way because of the new nature of uh, the road. I believe they will deal with them appropriately. The camera will confirm what had happened before the incident and what happened immediately after the incident. This camera you're talking about, is it positioned everywhere in Lagos State or are there certain places that the camera is currently positioned at? Well, they, I, I don't know if it's all over the Lagos. What I, could, what I said was that we were told that it had been uh, positioned along the third mainland bridge. All right. And um, is this maybe a time for us to look at, um, I mean, you've talked about working together but is there should there be further emphasis on collaboration between NEMA, uh, road safety, VIO and uh, you know just to ensure that these buses are thoroughly checked because beyond yes we can't always be able to foresee accidents but there are some cases where we can prevent them we've seen a number of these buses that are not fit for you know plying the roads still on the roads but it would seem that it's the private vehicles that are usually targeted for uh, road safety documents, uh, vehicle license and all the likes and uh, road worthiness. Some of these vehicles are not worthy to be on the road. So is this a time that will further implement ensuring that we focus on public transportation, a number of these uh, buses and downfalls like we call them here in Lagos? Yes, thank you. I just want to make a little observation over some uh, misconceived uh, assumption by Nigerians. There is nothing, uh, hardly we will have uh, road accidents. We only have crashes. Because accident is something that you have taken all necessary precautions and uh, when it failed, then the accident can happen. But when you talk of crashes, you might know that, oh, you have not put so, 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 so many things in place. And when the incident happened, then it's not an accident. It should be crash. So we don't call it accident. We call it crash because many things are not put in place. Many things we avoid on safety uh, behaviors, on safety practices, caused it to be a crash. Uh, aside from that, road safety, uh, LASEMA, LASMA, if you look at the pictures, our convergence at the spot, 
all of us, we deliberated, we worked, we spoke together. The same team, you can see the Marine Police, the Commissioner of Police, the uh, Zona, uh, so the Zona Director of Road Safety, the Lagos State Safety, uh, Lagos State uh, Sector Commander, the LASMA, every other agency that are supposed to be there, we were all there. So the collaboration is there. The campaign is there, awareness and sensation campaign is there. And uh, most importantly, you know, we have stopped selling of all these alcoholic drinks from the motor parks. What we are only hugging, and which we have continued to tell them, is the drinking of this sachet water, uh, sachet uh, alcoholic drinks, is not helping. Even when they are not within that uh, vicinity of uh, motor parks, the, this driver will go outside and purchase this thing. Many of them come into the park, you see a load of them inside their pockets. So, taking all necessary, because it is wrong, it's a criminal thing to come into the motor park to drink, but uh, the road safety, they promise to do a lot, of a lot of things now from this very incident, because one, you will notice that along strategic position, the last man, road safety, the police, they are positioned in some strategic locations so that uh, if incidents like this happen, and they can't stop a vehicle while they are on the run because there is no way you can stop them when they are on speed. So until when you now, when they get to his level and there is a way for us to stop them, then we will stop them. So the camera will play a very, very critical role. The awareness and sensitization campaign we play among the drivers, we play a role. But the larger population are the commuters, the passengers. They need to be aware of their rights. They need to be safety conscious. They shouldn't rush. The, uh, the, when they are supposed to go to a place, one hour ahead of the time, they should take off. Not just remaining 20 minutes, they will be hurrying drivers to move away. And such driver, if they obey them, that means he has committed an offense, and any passenger that is, that is ordering a driver to move in is, is also committing an offense and liable for imprisonment or cash, or the two of them together. Okay. Um, so, uh, will there be any introduction of um, you know, speed trackers, speed monitors, and are we going to see an introduction of possibly breathalyzers? Because whether you like it or not, uh, this drinking culture is also a, a, a serious case. And can you also confirm to us, please, um, we do hear that the driver is alive. Is there also going to be an investigation that will be carried on so that we can get to the root cause of what led to this actual accident? Well, uh, about the uh, arrest or uh, whatever happens to the driver, the police, the vehicle is already at the Adenija Adele police station. It has been towed down there. So the commissioner of police was there. It's not a thing anybody can just walk on. So uh, apart from that, putting speed limits, you know, it's not a, an international practice. So every other precautionary actions will be taken to minimize over speeding on the highway. The road safety. Uh, they've been working, they've been working, and, uh, you know, disasters is almost is always dynamic, and this is a new phase of it, and we are, uh, based on the dynamism, all agencies, all stakeholders, we work towards that. And one stakeholder that is very, very important is the media, along with the passengers. Once we have appropriate information, then we swing into action, to arrest the situation. So the media shouldn't be a reporting agency after, the, after an incident happens before they cover it. They should try to imbibe the culture of disaster risk reduction. Look at a, a situation ahead of time. Look at the risk. Uh, draw it out that in this area, this is the type of risk that is developing. Before it gets to disaster level, we should be aware Then we, not be, uh, we nip it at the board. So much, Mr. Brian Farin Loye, for talking to us, Coordinator, National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. Um, thank you for shedding more light on the incidents that took place yesterday and giving us an update as well. We truly appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. So let's head back to the papers, and uh, we do have our, uh, you know, analyst who's here with us as well. CKN is here. CKN, before we go straight to the papers, I mean, let's just go to the conversation we just yes. had.
you've heard what the coordinator has said. Um, the agencies involved have all gathered, they've met. It, I think there needs to be a change. Before you came, myself and Olive were talking deeply on this, that until possibly it, it gets to the, to, the, to the top where an elite has been affected, that you quickly see moves to make changes very quickly. But must we get to that level, seeing what happened yesterday? No, we mustn't. Um, uh, first and foremost, I think we need to put certain things in place. And um, I would say that it has to start with policies. And probably we start with Lagos. Um, if you see the kind of buses we have in Lagos, oh my, forget it. You know, once in a while, as a journalist, what I do is at times I park my vehicle. Okay. I go on this public transport, yes, because I need to get certain information. Um, maybe on certain things and issues. And when you sit down in the bus, you hear a lot of things that ordinarily, if you sit in your office or start get, trying you to gather news, you won't hear. So, and if the, most of them don't know you, they open up and, you know. So, once, most of, uh, once in a while, I do that. And the state of vehicles in Lagos, especially, let me just use mm. Lagos, because it's supposed to be a mega city, uh -huh. is nothing to write home about. And by now, I thought that the policy would have been put in place, put a cap on the years for vehicles be used as transportation in Lagos. If you say that any vehicle beyond 1996 or whatever, whatever, should not apply Lagos as a transport uh, for transportation, all well and good. It's not saying I'm not saying that is only that is only so, but that is a, that is the beginning. The second one is that there was a time. You remember what was happening with the moon? Yeah. At the point when we were having moon and they were Broadway was jumping up and down, killing people. And Lagos State government, I think it was under Fashola or something. Fashola came and said no. And people thought that it was not going to be possible to face out Mulwe in Lagos. And it was done. But the government was to initiate, put up some kind of initiation in bringing in vehicles. You know those vehicles they are talking about? That's when BRT and the rest of them started. And by now, I thought that there would have been a slow face out of most of these um, vehicles in Lagos. And they've not done that. You need to see this. Most of them don't have bricks. You know what? And that is, that is uh, at that point. Yeah. The second point is that, God forbid, something happened two weeks, uh, about a week or two, two weeks ago. And we wouldn't have been talking about this one because that would have been more disastrous. That was a very cool, that was a trans long tra tra uh, 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 bus with over 60 passengers that were almost plunged into Todd Man language. I'm sure you don't go, check, look, look, go and look for it. It's on YouTube. It was fully loaded, not PRD. You know those uh, yeah, long, long buses. It was just the medium that saved that vehicle. If that vehicle had plunged into into the, um, the Todd Mainland Bridge, by now, I will tell you that we have over 60 people that would have died instantly. The video is there. Go and check it. I'm not just, this is not something I'm, I'm talking as a celebrity, FRS celebrity special marshal. This is what I do. And then the third one for me is that yesterday, I met, uh, I met the Minister of Works somewhere. Oh, um, the yes, Engineer Dave Omaye. I was just leaving the studio. I just finished the program and I was just leaving. I was coming in to be a guest. And I said, sir, congratulations on Todd Mainland Bridge. But this bridge where we do, I said, is killing people. What are we going to do? And he said, don't worry, we're going to do something about it. And I hope that statement he makes will be comfortable. He's in Lagos. As of yesterday, he was in Lagos. So I don't know whether he's left for Abuja. And when he said that, I said, well, oh, well I'm good. Let's work. I don't know what they are planning to do. But what we need to do again is to be able to put a more enforcement on them. What is happening in Lagos now happening in Abuja? Mm -hmm. When the Abuja Road were so well, you know, when they constructed that Abuja Road, it was so Wide blue light and, and beautiful. The people were just killing themselves. And, the, and I think that road safety came in, the Federal Minister of Force came in, VI, everybody came in. And you can see that it was reduced to the barest minimum. I don't know what they did. They need to start that on Todd Mellon Bridge. Because what, they have, uh, what most motorists have seen on that Todd Mellon, many people have not seen it before. So everybody will just throw down and because it's everything. It's everything. Beautiful, it's so beautiful and beautiful. something. Smooth. When you talk about cameras, cameras will not solve anything. As if that would have happened before you capture whoever over speed. Aren't we? I don't know what can be done, but I feel that the federal road safety through the national uh, the headquarters and Lagos State Command and the zonal coordinators. We have to put a lot of enforcement on the top. It's a federal road, so I don't know. I not, think maybe there should have been a lot of speed breakers on that third mainland. No, no, you can't put a speed so breaker like, like that on uh, on a bridge like that. Yeah. It will be because speed breakers also have its own problem. If somebody is over speeding and suddenly see, even when you're driving, yeah. when you see, you see I suddenly want to drive. That's a, <laughs> that's a so lagoon. By, yeah. by the time you swap, you're already inside it. So uh, street, uh, street uh, what do you call it? Speed breaker do, might not just do, be. Do you problem. think? Do but, you think they need to? I mean, like. If you go to other... Anyway, we'll, we'll continue this conversation. Let's go for an ad break. And when we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. All 
All right, so we we'll welcome uh, back to uh, the papers this morning. A lot of things happening. We're still taking a look at uh, one of the biggest stories, uh, and it's got to do with the accidents that uh, did take place on the Third Maiden Bridge yesterday in front page of the Daily Times. Our guest CKN is still here, and we're looking at that story. We did talk about um, ways to avoid this, and earlier on, we're also joined by the coordinator, Neymar, uh, Mr. Ibrahim Farin Lawyer, who indeed confirmed to us that the two bodies have uh, not been uh, found yet, have not been recovered, and um, a lot is still ongoing after that incident or that accident that took place yesterday. So, CKN, we did talk about um, the rickety uh, <laughs> bosses that we have mm -hmm. on. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a video I took myself because I do have a, a, phone, a phone holder on the car. Mm -hmm. So when I saw this boss, I saw this boss sometime in December, a few months ago. I quickly tapped on record. Mm. I think I, I have that video. I'd like to show it to the public. I'd like to show Nigerians as well. And we do know that uh, some of the uh, road management agencies, uh, enforcement agencies are also watching. So they can also see some of the challenges that we have in Lagos. And hopefully the governor, Governor Babajide Songwulu, uh, also gets to see these images as well. Mm. This image is one that you would wonder what indeed would a bus like this mm. be doing on the roads. Mm -hmm. All right. So once we get that video up, we'll put it up and then you can you, you get to see it as well. But then again, way forward to avoid these accidents from taking place. Way forward. Way forward. One is a lot of um, engagement, education, um, most of our people don't understand the rudiments of driving. And you know why? You will come to see that close to about 80% of drivers on Nigeria do not go through any training. People just go pick up a driver's license. Even most of them are fake driver's license. You don't go through the rudiments. Most of them don't even know street and the road signs. They no. don't. Most of them, including myself, so many road signs. Take, that. take a look at this video. This is you what see, I saw on the Yes, uh, but this is the daily occurrence on uh, Lagos Road. Normal now. These are normal. I saw it on Lakey Road. I had to quickly record. You can, you can, see, you can see that look vehicle. That. And law enforcement agencies will see it. They will allow them to go. Um, those um, that are supposed to enforce, the, they cannot pull them off. We are even talking about it. Even on the express, the express, you will see a lot of tankers with some of them not having tires. Mm. Not even mm. some of them not having. You see that the tanker that's supposed to have about eight tires has about seven, and has products on it, and they are allowed to pass and go. That is an accident waiting to happen. I know that the, the road safety have tried uh, trying to uh, um, engage the issue of speed limit, speed meters on um, vehicle, big vehicle, the large vehicles, and the rest mm. of them. How that way? When Nigeria, when we were talking about the smaller, they say, "Oh, Nigeria, how much? You do not how much. It's going to cause a blah blah blah." They're forgetting that accident is anything that can. If it happens, or just like um, um, the Nama said, road crashes, not even accident. It happens. It can happen to anybody. Yeah. But for me, for Lagos, most especially, is that we have to. The government have to come out with a policy. There was something. The guy that was this guy that was uh, a former commissioner of um, transportation in Lagos, Okpaifa. That man, that guy did a wonderful. You know, that guy did a wonderful job when he was commission of um, transportation. I don't know the current person. I don't know who he is and what he has been doing. But there uh, must be some level of collaboration between the Lagos State Minister of um, Transportation, Road Safety, VIO, and it's not just it's not just merely checking um, whether you have driver's license, um, uh, whether your fire your fire extinguisher, your tire, uh, your tire this those are not the basic. The fact is that the fundamentals. Because a lot of people use this transport every day and their lives, they endanger their lives. So I have said it. Our, the way forward is to put a cap on the number of years for vehicle that is going to be transported. Not that, that's a vehicle that, uh, that, that's old as about 1970 and you see them flying Lagos. Hmm. Oh, yes! It's a fact. They are the ones of people who are, like you see these vehicles are carrying overload. You can see that there are people hanging on the top of the vehicles hanging behind the vehicles. And another site that people on the mainland may not be able re to relate to on the island that we see often is animals. You are driving. I've almost had an accident once horses. because a horse crossed. The, I don't know how we're even going to navigate that one. I, I, we should start with the human first. Like, for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm sure you agree with I'm me. I'm not a human. No, I'm not a human. We cannot do it with animals. For me, okay. it's the human being that matters me. And I said it. I, because I, some, I of them, some of them already behave like the animals on the road. If not, nothing is done about the third mainland bridge, 
it's going to get to a point where we're going to have serious, a very, very, very serious accident that we come to where it gets, oh, have we known we, we should have done then? My own is that we should try to improve enforcement. I want to believe that we should have about three points of enforcement on Todd Menland Bridge now. I agree. Where we have road safety, VI, if it doesn't have to be VIO, if it's a uh, last mile, whatever, that must be true. The police is doing very well. Yeah. The, the police is they're doing very there. well. The, the, I have to commend the RRS. Yes. And yes I think the police uh, point. No, yes. I think at that point, we need to clap for the police. Yes. The yes. police is doing a wonderful well job. Yeah. Well, on Todd Menland Bridge. Yes. There is no point in terms that you, it started with Tunji Disu when he was the commander of RRS and they have remained there. You, 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 you drive on Todd Menland Bridge now, you're always even are coming at about 12 in the night. You see them there. It gives you some level of security. But that is on their own part. They are not the one to regulate who is going to drive fast or low on this thing. That enforcement has to do with road safety and probably other agencies. Really like, but we must do something about Todd Menland Bridge or else there is prob a problem looming. All right. Um, I don't know if we have time to take more papers yet. Take or we... Just one more. Okay, let's quickly take our final paper this morning. Uh, on the front page of Vanguard newspaper, uh, the big story, tariff hike, 20 hour supply for Band A customers under threat. Uh, that's something that um, we ought to do this morning. Uh, 20 hour, <laughs> that's something we ought to look at this morning. Uh, we also have there, there are some soft stories explaining what exactly is going on. Anyway, transfer of pension money out of Nigeria escalates. Inquiry, Okwama community shuns military panel, Okoloba in attendance. And then we also have, um, still on the front pages of the newspaper, PDP, NEC meeting, governors, authors renew battle for parties so Fair court, EPIS chair, Onyema slams foreign airlines over conspiracy. We'll come to talk about that. Idel Fitri, our security improving federal government declares. Um, Edo gubernatorial elections. My impeachment won't stand, says Shaibu. Man, at this point, this man needs to really chill. Like, it, I don't see anything. I don't see how this is going to turn out differently. Alleged defamation. Better Adu threatens to sue BBC. Oh, -ho. Mm. no cause for alarm uh, on next Ulubado. So, I want you to quickly talk about, I mean, as quickly as possible because we run out of time. Um, Air Peace Chair Onyema Slamming Foreign Airlines. There have been updates about how the different foreign airlines have started to cut down the cost of travel. And these are people that had like really ridiculous prices to London. So we're starting to see them cutting their cost of travel now. And he alleges that what they intend to do is squeeze him out of business. Because if you hear uh, an airpiece is flying for 600000 and you hear that the big names are also flying within that range, some people would rather go with the, you know, the bigger foreign airlines. And then eventually when they kick him out of business, they will revert to what it was before. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, I agree with you, I agree with you um, because it's as ridiculous as some of this, um, this fare have crashed as much uh, as, uh, come down to as much as $300. $300 on a London route. Have you ever, mm. you know, have you heard this before? I so, said, you know, I, I looked said, on, on no, their wait, side wait, 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 and I would fly this. $300. That is just three hundred. That, that was about six hundred. When I checked, I saw six hundred. It has come. I saw one. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. It's coming down to about three hundred. So that means you're Free holiday. No. Free so, summer. But we have to do. <laughs> we have again. to do something. The government has to do something urgently. Yeah. There is nowhere in the world that you allow your airline or whatever to just flow like that. And yeah. I remember what happened during COVID. The United States of America had to come in with a high level of subsidy so that the American airline. Um, this thing did not collapse. So we are given a lot of incentives. I believe that the government can come in now and assist airpiece in whatever. Yes, it's a private, but this guy is practically the Nigerian flag by uh, bearer as it were. Incentives including removal of certain tasks, um, helping in whatever you can be able to. Because I saw him on national TV just two days ago. The man was lamenting that if we allow this to happen, then there's a big problem because they will take airpiece out of the way. Then, they, if you are thinking, talking about 17 million in the past for first class, they will now increase 34. it to 24 and 36 and whatever, and there's nothing we can do. And I think that the government can be able to do something, but good enough. And let us also give kudos to where Festus Kiyamu, as the Minister of uh, Aviation, is doing a good job on this. He has been trying his best uh, on this. He was able to get um, the guy to, they said they are not going to give us it through. That they are it's not okay. going to do It's okay. That's that was how we got to it. I want us to go to US. I want us to also go to US. We should be going to New York. We should be going to New York. We should be going to Atlanta. So like play, like play. We go to Nassau. We go to Nassau. Like play, like play. Because look at it. This guy is doing. This guy is going to India. He's going to China. 
He's making a 16-hour non-stop flight to China. From here to New York is 11 hours. I, I, I fly, I fly uh, Delta. How the, we know I the fly economic, Delta. We know the economic importance of I fly China, Delta, Nigeria. Lagos, New York. Mm. It's 11 hours. So for an, an airline to be doing 16 hours non-stop, you know what it takes? So they were the first do airline to ever do Nigeria to Jamaica, although it was a collaborative effort I'm telling you, with another, with the, the travel Dubai route will still also, uh, will also open up. And so I think that what we need to do is we're able to government to really, really support this initiative or else we are going to be having serious problems. Not just the food. government, Nigerians as well. No, Nigerians. Eh. No, I can tell Nigerians are so patriotic. No, Nigerians are. Nigerians yeah. are key into this. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen some people even on Twitter saying that if they like, let them reduce their own to one naira, they are going to fly a piece. And that's patriotism. And I believe Why I'm saying this is because I still hear a number of, I've heard a number of Nigerians, and I know what I'm saying, that will tell you that they are afraid of local airlines because there's just the fears of safety. So rather than fly, I know people within Nigeria, and I know of certain people who work in airlines that will say that, in fact, I don't want to call the name of the airline. They say that for them to fly from Lagos to Abuja, they have to fly out of Nigeria first before they fly back to Abuja. Well, everybody have their preference. So everybody, they don't everybody, everybody have their preference. Exactly. Everybody have their preference. So that's why I'm hoping that we we'll see more support. Everybody can but fly Whatever they do, we everybody will, cannot will, fly airplanes. But the fact is that we have to push this narrative. So they can buy We Nigeria. must push this narrative. So this is a buy the Naira, save the Naira. Yes, yes. we just have to, we have, just have to support airplanes as it And for me, I was expecting that by now, the president would have congratulated airplanes, released a statement encouraging Nigerians to go. You know, basically, just a... To, to increase that volume of patriotism that everyone is talking about. But then again, yeah. if, if we continue this conversation, we will not take this No, let me, speak, let me run off. So go ahead. No, the, the president doesn't have to do that. The president has given the Minister of Aviation the directive. Without the support of the president, Professor Kiyama cannot do what he's doing. So he has given all the necessary support. So Professor Kiyama doing whatever he's doing, the bidding of the day. And he said, whenever he has any challenges, he can always go back to the president. And Oyema doing the... Um, the IFTA, uh, this and that, the, uh, the guys within the economy yes. had with it. He spoke loudly, and the president also acknowledged that. But what I just think that we should support this man to source it. I agree. I agree. There's also conversations about the Ishaku that was being worn. People said, why would they wear I think you should shut up their mouth. Uh, anyway, they shut anyway up. I, relax. Don't take, don't, don't take it. Ishaku. 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 Don't take Ishi. it personal. Ishi. Ishi. No, 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 no. no. People should shut up. Like, so you haven't started your business. Someone has started his business, decided he wants to show oh, you. Don't know where they are. Exactly. Leave that one. Leave that one. People will always talk. People will talk. Exactly. So let's take our last paper for today. Today, our last paper, let's see what it, uh, it is. This first story here is a sad one. Outrage in Zamfara as NSCDC kills woman during aid prayer. Mob set NSCDC vehicle on fire as police arrest two officials in connection with killing. Very sad incident. Sad. It was much more like we had three sad incidences that took place yesterday. This one... Uh, the one in Delta, the actor who drowned, and a few others who drowned with him. And then we also had the third mainland bridge. Don't return to disobedience after Ramadan cleric tasks Muslims. Lagos bus accident plunges two persons into lagoon. And then, of course, the conversation we just had, airpiece, foreign airlines lowering Lagos London fares to edge us out. But then again, I'm going to add to that airpiece, that's what business is about. Yes, that's right. business. So <laughs> let, let's, let us airpiece yeah. not take it personal. It's business. If you sell rice in certain place and your rice is 300 naira, someone else will come and sell it for 300 ah, no, naira. No, no, it's we'll business. Take it personal. Why no, 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 take, it's business. Why would take it personal is because flying in the past year or two has been a Herculean olive, task. Olive, it's business. Nigeria is a beehive of business where they can make money because nigerians did not have an alternative so the alternative was them so they, i mean we have the analyst here back back to you what story are you going to take here <laughs> yes the the killing of the woman at the head uh, this thing you, you are saying just two uh, three incidents there are more yesterday another in lagos died. oh yeah he just the went to eat uh, then also <laughs> in abuja the son of a former kogi state governor also died just immediately after prayer so but this thing happens. It's life. Um, there are some that are avoidable. The one that happened on Third Mainland Beach was avoidable. The one of killing of um, uh, a woman during prayer is avoidable. And I've always said that our security agencies should be able to learn how to handle guns. And that is why sometimes that you just when we're talking about everybody should be giving gun, everybody should be giving mm. gun. It's not everybody that should be giving gun. The end. The, the was it the civil defense were not having guns in the past. 
but because of the nature of what they are doing, especially when it comes to the when it comes to the Niger Delta, the oil bond crane and rest of which is their own primary responsibility to be able to check when they, they but they should be very, very careful. But what we've not seen of late after NSAS is accidental discharge. I'm sure only when last the year of accidental discharge. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, so you, 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 that was because of NSAS. NSA. Yes. The police seems to have gotten their ass together. And in these days of social media, when you slap anybody unnecessary, you don't it know whether somebody is inside the bush yeah. and is recording you. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so that is, is a bit, that is a very, very sad narrative um, that it happens once in a while. But our security agencies should just be very, very, very careful the way they handle their guns. That gun giving them is our tax, our money. And our money they take, keep buy those guns. So it was not given to you for you to use it to keep it's it. It's not just our money that is using yes. to buy the guns. Our money even the uniform, everything, even every special, thing. even the boot and rest yes. of them. So they should be very, very careful. All that right. was a very, very sad. Thank one. you very much, wait, wait. Jessica, for yes. joining us. Thank you very much for joining us on today's broadcast. We're back again tomorrow. And we hope that you've enjoyed your really long holiday, those of us watching from Nigeria, and that you're ready to return to work. Anyway, it's a Friday, so it's going to be a half day. Are you sure some people will go to work? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a valid question. <laughs> we <laughs> like holidays. Did you say we well, love <laughs> holidays? Anyway, I'm worked in Monday but I'm just time. happy that people are resuming work because I'm beefing all the people that went to that were on holiday. It's, it's celebration we're working, all the time. You must go back to work. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you to all our guests who've joined us physically and virtually. We'll be back again same time and do well to continue the conversation on social media at New Central TV. I am Olive M.O.D. And I'm Johansson. Thank you, CKN. See Thank you again you. tomorrow morning. Au revoir.